<laughs> Whatever are you wearing? Fear is proof of a degenerate mind. Simply deliver and breathe because the tyrant sent us to you, it was forbidden. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be in here. Talk. What business could you possibly have with me? My marital affairs are no concern of yours. Thank you very much. An intriguing proposition. Go on. Hmm. Perhaps you're not as silly as those clothes make you look. You know, I may have the very thing you're looking for. Some time ago, when he still cared for me, he wrote me a love letter. Only, he used the wrong name. Now, Addressing one's wife by the wrong name is not unheard of among philandering Romans. But in this case, the name he got wrong was his own. I confronted him about it, and he stammered through some incoherent response. I let it go, eventually, and yet... questions have lingered in the back of my mind ever since. But... wait a minute. To withdraw. Listen, I may not be Penelope to his Ulysses, but to ruin his plans to become a magistrate? You must think me quite mad. Domitius, come quickly. We're being robbed. I need to call Demit. Demitius doesn't usually let anyone in here without a hefty tribute, so you must have been desperate to see me. My name is you, and I'm. I like to think it. Well, unlikely, because it simply isn't true. I trust you can see yourself out. Vesta watch over you. Well, I suppose we'd first need to figure out which god that is. This might sound like a strange question, but please humor me. How did you find your Fear way here? Is proof of a degenerate mind. Karen, you say? And nothing about that name seemed odd to you. Older. I see. Hmm. I wonder if. 
No. I apologize. Have you spoken with any of the others about how they arrived here too? I really think you should. Good. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you too. Up until a few weeks ago, she was a perfectly productive member of our little community, darning clothes and cutting hair. She was always so chatty. And then, about a month, she withdrew. But she just looked at her. Look, it could be unrelated. But then I just... You have. Then what is it? Hmm, yet yeah, what else? Yes, I understand many of our friends were carried here by a river current. What else? That's true. It's as I feared. You mentioned earlier, you met a young woman in the forest named Karen. Yes. I see. And was this Karen by any chance wearing a hood? Because I've seen her before. There's something I think you should see. Don't follow too closely. Keeping an eye on things, Horatius? As always, Priestess. Any news about Centilla, Navia, or Kabash? No sign of any of them, I'm afraid. But we do have a newcomer. Strangely dressed fellow. Funny accent, too. A traveler from a faraway land, then? Seems that way. Then let's make sure he feels welcome, shall we? Of course, Priestess. Hello? Uh... Hello? My name's Dooley. I live here now because I got in trouble and they... They said they had to lock me up. I don't know. Yes. But I wasn't. They said I did it. More than once. But I can't remember things so good. Yes. They said I have to live here now. And gave me this letter. But I'm not good with words. What does it say? Uh, my treasure. My friend Hannibal used to look after me. He said he always would. But then, he died. It was very sad. He said, if anything ever happened to him, I had to find something very precious hidden away. He gave me this key and made me promise to keep it safe until I found the treasure. But I couldn't find it. All I remember is he said something about the cisterns. Now nobody looks after me. Except my friend Galerius. And Ek... Ek... The priestess lady. You're going to let me out of here? Really? Oh. Please. You're me.
You're here. Here. Look down at the bottom of the baths. It's a little hard to make out in this light. If only we could see. Oh, what a marvelous lamp. But do you see it? Somebody waking up by a river in a forest to find a hooded figure with a coin. It's just as you described it. Only your pronunciation is a little off. The name you heard wasn't Karen. It was C-H-A-R-O-N, as in Charon, the Charon, who in exchange for the right coin, helps the souls of the newly deceased cross the sticks. When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never gonna wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, but all I found was some loose change. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's Karen. I'm so sorry, my friend. I'm so, so sorry. I'm afraid so. It's all starting to make sense. All these people whose last memory was running from the fires toward the river. It seems none of them escaped with their lives after all. It also tells us that the Golden Rule is the work of Pluto, the god of the underworld. I know it's a lot to take in, and you look as if you have questions, so I'll try to answer them if I can. That was my first thought too, but it was also possible for the living to reach it without dying if they were particularly fearless, so I'm afraid I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting you're not from here. If you were Roman, or even Greek, you would know these stories. Each of them is slightly different, but they always involve the souls of the dead meeting a grim ferryman named Charon on the bank of a river. It was said that he'd help the new arrival cross only if they could pay him with a coin, an obol. That's why it was once our custom to bury our loved ones with a coin in their mouths. Of course, an obol was a kind of Greek coin. The only difference is that they spelled it with a kappa, which I suppose means K-H-A-R-O-N is closer to the original spelling. To be fair, the ferryman isn't exactly as the poets described, and he, she, they, they seem to appear to different people in different guises. You say you saw a young woman named Karen with a hood, and I once heard Kabash mention a stranger in a ram headdress named Kurti, and Rufius described meeting a stranger named Kamut Tabal wearing an eagle headdress. But whatever form this stranger took, they were always wearing a hood of some sort, and their name always began with a K sound. I suspect the only way you'll solve this riddle is if your paths cross again. Good question. Let's see. In the stories, Charon would always require a coin as payment for passage across the river, but that never made any sense to me. In our case, it seems Charon didn't take the coins we had. He or she merely checked we had one in our possession. So, maybe there's something special about the coins each of us had on us. No. I mean, I had my suspicions, especially after Livia's ramblings, now that we know where we are, we, we don't have much to go on, except the old stories. Hercules, the demigod and son of Jupiter, Orpheus, a Thracian poet, Sisyphus, a king of Ephyra, and Aeneas, a Trojan hero. Hercules was able to leave the underworld because he cowed its god with his strength. Sisyphus and Orpheus both relied on their wits instead. They persuaded the goddess of the underworld, Proserpina, to help them escape. And finally, Aeneas was able to escape with the help of a spirit guide, who led him through a secret gate. So it seems you have two options. To confront the god of the underworld head-on, or find a way to escape with the help of Proserpina or some other guide. As I mentioned, both the problem is, those are the stories of a poet, a self-aggrandizing king, and a brawler about their own heroic deeds, so they should be taken with a grain of salt. First, Proserpina. It's said 
The god of the underworld abducted and dragged her here against her will, forcing her into marriage. If the stories are true, then I suppose so. The problem is, how do we communicate with her without being noticed by her captor? Leaving that aside for a moment, there is also the possibility of a spirit guide. Truly? And you're only bringing this up now? Then again, I suppose you were worried I'd think you were as mad as Navia. Can you tell me more? Fascinating. Perhaps she is a benevolent spirit. If she has indeed been abducted, it would make sense for her to speak in cryptic whispers to avoid detection. Tell me, has she told you anything that might lead you to the way out? Truly? Then why are you still here? Ah, oh, I see. Then it seems you have made a great sacrifice for all of us, friend. But unfortunately, I'm afraid your only other option will be to confront you know who. All Romans try to avoid saying it, and the reason is quite simple. He might hear us. You may refer to him as Pluto, if you wish, but you'll only be calling attention to yourself. Shh. <laughs> that option would be the boldest, but also the only way to learn the truth about the Golden Rule, and maybe even put an end to it. As I said, Hercules managed to overpower the god of the underworld, but he was a demigod. Are you telling me that you can? I won't pretend to understand exactly what that means, but if that's true, then perhaps you stand a chance. So, if... who knows? Perhaps your name will be uttered in the same sentence as Hercules one day. But first, You'd need an audience with you-know-who, and for that, you'll need to enter the great temple overlooking the city. The problem is, the door has been sealed shut for as long as I've lived here, and there doesn't even seem to be a keyhole. I suspect the answer lies in the desecrated obelisk in front of it. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there are four plaques missing from its base. It looks as though somebody, or a series of somebodies, forcibly removed them. If you could recover and replace all four of those missing plaques, I imagine he might be willing to receive an audience again. It's the towering stone monument, with you'll find them all over Rome. However, this one is unusual, in that each of the four sides is decorated in a different style. Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and another I don't recognize. That means you'll need to recover four different plaques. I don't know. But perhaps you should begin your search with the local Greek fellow, Georgius. Perhaps Kabash, our Egyptian resident, will be able to tell us. But I did hear Aurelia is peddling rumors about him at the tavern. I'm afraid you're on your own with that one. would suggest not discussing this with anyone. As for Livia, it seems she's been shouldering the weight of this terrible secret all this time. In any case, may Fortuna guide you. Ave again. It must be, it'll be between, why do you, you can. All of the male citizens who are willing and able to attend. Well, you're not a citizen yet. So, no, I'm afraid not. But if it's any consolation, there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election. By using whatever gifts the gods gave you. All of them. Hmm, that's just the way it's always been, I'm afraid. There are some women who can vote, vestal priestesses like myself, but in this case, given my role overseeing the election, I've decided to abstain. I can't allow the perception that I'm being anything but fair and independent, but if it's any consolation... 
I'm responsible for announcing it and making sure the procedures are followed. Certainly. Oh my, I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a Vestal Priestess and without due formality or courtesy ask, what is your story? The proper approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. And then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So, let's do it your way. You... You know, I'm not entirely sure. Karen, you... You do? Have you spoken... I really... Good... I... I don't, I'm afraid. See you again. Salve, Dooley. How are you doing today? I'm sad. Am I going to die in here? Salve again, friend. I went and did as you asked, and... It worked! How is it possible that you've just arrived here and you already know everyone and exactly what's about to happen to them? Uh, you're toying with me, right? Wait, you're not kidding, are you? That's the only way you could have known. You're a bit like... Oh, what was his name? Sisyphus. Yeah, that's the one. Old King Sisyphus. Sisyphus was a Greek king a long time ago. For daring to think he could outsmart the gods, he was given a terrible punishment. He was forced to push a great boulder up to the top of a hill, forcing him to start over and over and over again for all eternity. Just like you. Actually... Now that I think about it, there are a bunch of old stories about the gods punishing people by making them do the same futile task over and over. Tantalus was made to grasp at fruit on a tree he could never quite reach. The Pelides had to keep fetching water in a sieve. Oh, and Ixion was strapped to a wheel going round and round forever. But on the bright side, at least you're not stuck in the underworld like they all were. Anyway. I don't know which god you managed to upset to get yourself into this position, friend, but you seem all right to me. So, I'll tell you what. I'll keep doing whatever I can to help you, and you just focus on finding a way to break the cycle you're in. Oh, that's kind of you to say. Now, I'm going to keep your secret. Oh, and if our conversations ever start to annoy you, just tell me you're busy. I saw you slide down that rope before. Very impressive. And strange, too. Oh, of course. It's because I already gave it to you in a previous time loop, isn't it? Anyway, I'm sorry to ask, but is there any chance you'd be willing to do me a favor? Well, I've been trying to get this rare flower from the rock spire in the middle of the lake. It's too steep to climb, so I hung a rope over the lake and made this pulley device, only I... Uh, couldn't quite summon the nerve to use it. Do you think you could use the device again and try to get that flower for me? I, uh, I don't really feel comfortable talking about it. Look, I'll tell you everything if you get it for me, all right? Oh, thank you. It would help me a lot. All right. Salve again? No. Uh, even I could do a better... All right. Ah, a 
fellow traveler from afar. Greetings. I... My friend, your... And in a city full of Romans, you are asking me, because I am Greek. Let me tell you something about Greeks and Romans. My name is Georgios, yes. But the Romans, they do not care. They hear me say Georgios, and they think, ah, he must mean Georgius. Good Roman name. They do this all the time. They see us worshipping Zeus, they copy us, but call him Jupiter. They take Hades and call him Pluto, Persephone, Proserpina. I am flattered that they copy our ideas, but why must they change the names? At first, I pull my hair out. After a while, I give up, and I become Georgius the Roman. I accept the world is Roman. Plus, I have no hair left to pull. But my point is this. If you want to know who stole an old Greek name, look no further than the sticky-fingered Romans. The plague you seek was pilfered from a collection of old Greek relics by none other than Dooley. Uh, he cannot help it. And besides, it makes him happy. So I say, let him keep it. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. Hello? that Promethean fire is not for sale. Forty-nine melodies fetch again, with incessant labor, the water they have lost. Isn't that an impressive trinket? You, Sisyphus, just as the ocean, but it... Say it. Then it is true. I was right. I thought... I thought I saw it, but when the rest of them could not, I kept thinking I must have gone insane. I had to tell myself it was true over and over again. I must apologize if my words seem cryptic. He gives such an uncanny description of this place. I cannot help but wonder if he himself came here. I will do my best to remember the relevant verse. There is a downward path, gloomy with fatal yew trees. It leads through dumb silence to the infernal regions. 
The sluggish Styx exhales vapor, and by that way, the shadows of the newly dead descend, entombed with full rites, and the ghosts of those, at last, given proper burial. The wide, thorny wake, as the- There are the- I hope I- And now we share a secret. Friend.
wonder how much one of these statues is worth on the outside. <laughs> Salve again? No. Brilliant! You did it! This is going to make her so happy. Aquitia, I mean. What I really want to do is walk up to her, give her the flower, and confess I've been madly in love with her since the moment we met. But on the other hand, I can't shake the feeling that the consequences could be... terrible. You mean, aside from her execution? You see, Equitia is a Vestal Priestess, meaning she's taken a vow of chastity. The breaking of which would be an extremely serious affront to the gods and a capital offense. Even if she was just suspected of being unchaste, it could lead to her execution. Unchaste Vestals get buried alive, but at the same time, she's just so... kind and graceful. I don't know what to do. Hmm. Now that I hear you say that out loud, I hear how crazy it is. What I need is a go-between. What do you say? Wonderful! Now, all I need you to do is give her the flower and tell her it's from a secret admirer. Thank you. again. Oh, how lovely. It just happens to be my favorite, too. I see. So, it's from Galerius, then? Of course I do. I think everyone in the city knows. That man is a wonderful human being, and my favorite person in the world. But he is the least subtle secret admirer you could imagine. Plus, he's been trying for weeks to get his hands on this flower. He'd just stand there each morning, looking at the flower, trying to summon the courage to seize it. Tell that adorable oath that my Vestal's vow of chastity ends once I turn 36. So, if we ever make it out of here, and he doesn't mind waiting a few years, then tell him I love him too. I hope so. See you again.
fortune smile on you, brother. Salve again? No. Thanks. Venus, that is the best news I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I wish there was something I could do to thank you properly, but all I can do is tell you where there's a secret stash of coins you might be interested in. Thank you, friend. But I'd feel bad if I didn't tell you anyway. In the rock tunnel, near the stairs, there's a little doorway set into the rock. Inside, if you look carefully, you can see a chest. Unfortunately, one of those golden huntress statues is blocking the path, and I'm not game to move it. If you can figure out how to get past it, I reckon there might be a small fortune waiting for you. Uh, even I...